Hey guys, Tony here. Back to do a recent vinyl editions video. Um, I gotta be honest. Well, first, hope everybody's well out there. Things are good on my end. Um, tomorrow, I find out, hopefully, uh, if we're gonna be having a boy or a girl. So, excited for that tomorrow morning. So, if everything works out and, you know, they could see, we'll know. So, very cool. So, anyway. I want to try and keep this video short. I have a lot to show you. As you can probably tell from the title, it's a recent vinyl edition video number 71, I want to say. Um, some very, very cool stuff. And I'm really excited about these records. I want to try and make this video fast for... I know it could be just a harrowing experience sitting through a 25-minute video, you know? I'm going to do my best here, no promises, um, but really excited about this stuff. Sort of a story about it too, I mean, some stuff I just sort of picked up, local stores and other things uh, came in the mail, but mostly um, a couple weeks ago, I'm going to shout out Mike Bosoni Reggie a number of times here. He surprised me by coming down uh, to my neck of the woods and um, went, we went record shopping. Well, I sort of did the same thing to him over the weekend. Um, I really wanted to go to a store closer to him, Feeding Tube Records, hands down, like one of the greatest stores ever. I love this store. Um, it's just unbelievably good. Uh, owned by um, Byron, Co Byron Coley, if I'm saying that right. Yeah, Byron Coley, the pretty well-known music journalist. And it's cool because you could just you go to this record store and he's behind the counter we ended up just kind of bullshit music with them for a while. It's such a cool thing. But, yeah, that day, Saturday, I just decided I'm, I'm going up there. If Mike can meet up with me, cool. But either way, I'm going to the store, you know. I've wanted to go back there forever. So we hooked up and went. And oh, just amazing, amazing store. Uh, just everything in the place I want. It's one of those. Uh, and I found an amazing find. Um unbelievable and I'm gonna save that for the last but everything here is amazing I think and I want you like some of this stuff a lot of you guys might be familiar with these albums and stuff but think of it in terms of me discovering this music all these albums like within a week I mean it's just mind-blowing uh, amazing stuff so I'm just gonna get started showing you uh, I'm gonna run through as quick as possible so anyway a lot of jazz at the end, uh, just the good kind, some really cool stuff. But start with this. Uh, finally picked up a copy of this. Uh, Explosions in the sky. The earth is not a cold dead place. Beautiful, beautiful post rock record. I mean, ever popular album band. I mean, fantastic and, and a beautiful record, 12 piece set and awesome. This one I have not listened to. Um, more post rock, I guess, with an EP, Mogwai, uh, Earth Division EP, which came out last year. Uh, these are outtakes from the Hardcore Will Never Die sessions. Uh, from what I understand, what I read about this, is four tracks, uh, it's sort of more quieter material. Um, a couple people said it would be perfect for like soundtrack music because it's just the quieter material. So, love that cover, but. Yeah, looking forward to it. I have not listened to this yet. This one I picked up was actually recommended to me by my little sister. Um, and again, I know Mike, Bostonian Reggie, he knows about this record. A um, little bit different for me, but I'm always looking for you know different stuff. Um, interesting. Sort of uh, electronic, disco-y, very cool, you know, beat sort of record. Um I'd see this record in the store and I would think it'd be it was some metal album just by the look of it. But it's Justice. Damn, I forget where they're from now. Um I forget. I wanna say Europe. They're somewhere they're a European. Um this record sold a lot. I'm sure you, a lot of you guys are familiar with this. I think it's just called Cross, really. So it's Justice Cross. Um very interesting. Gotta listen to it some more. Two LP set released. 2007. I bought it used. Um, cool stuff. 
just gotta listen to it some more. Very cool beats, you know, just interesting. So very happy to get it. Go right from that to uh, sort of a uh, influential album to the whole freak folk movement. Um, I, I guess, yeah. I know Derek. This is a favorite of yours. That's sarcasm. Um, yeah, I just heard him mention this before. Vashti Bunyan with Just Another Diamond Day. And a beautiful record. I've been listening to this for a little while now. I've downloaded it before I've, I found the vinyl. And um, just a very beautiful folk record, UK folk. Um, cool stuff. I mean, for what it is. The story, I guess, is that she, I want to say she and her husband sort of took off. And um, I want to say she, like, moved to the country, but she took a horse and buggy and a dog. And the songs are sort of reflective of that, that lifestyle or that desire for that kind of life. And very cool. Uh, this one blew me away. Um, really sort of made me a fan. I was sort of hot and cold on this band, and this I, I really enjoyed. And speaking of freak folk, I guess this is sort of along those those lines. It's it's called their freak folk record, but. Animal Collective with Sung Tongues and um, Blew Me Away. Um, usually mostly acoustic stuff, but it's still experimental as hell, of course, and but you know, psychedelic, but you know, folky acoustic sort of stuff. But it's amazing, an amazing record. And this made me a fan, I gotta say. Awesome. Um, I believe only two members of the band were really involved in this. One of them was Panda Bear, I know that. From 2004, um, probably one of their most well-received records, and for a reason, I mean, excellent, excellent stuff. So, very happy to get this. These next two again, I got a shout-out to Mike, Bostonian Reggie. Picked these up today, actually. So, um, yeah, he recommended this one. This first one here, you know, Mike had shown in a video. I wasn't sure. I texted him. He was like, yeah, that's the one, you know. And um, he said it was one of his favorites from 2011. And I put it on when I got home. Planned on giving it sort of a cursory listen. Um, just to have really something to say about it. And I couldn't stop listening to it. This is fantastic. Uh, Wisconsin duo uh, called Peaking Lights. Uh, sort of an electronic dub uh, pop duo, very psychedelic, uh, very hypnotic stuff, fantastic, like, bass lines, and just amazing, amazing, love it, highly recommend this, um, the name of the album is 936, yeah, 2011, fantastic, I, I love this, um, just sort of zone out to it, it's beautiful, and, um, really, really great stuff, so, highly recommend it. And this one as well. I'm I'm just beginning to think you just cannot go wrong with anything with this band. Sonic Youth, rather ripped, and I believe this is their most recent, perhaps their last album from 2006. I listened to about half of this, and I loved it. Absolutely loved it. For me, to what I heard, I mean, there's a lot of their more recent albums that I haven't been exposed to, but. This, to me, sounds very like their most Velvet Underground-influenced album. Loved it, and so happy to get it. I wanted to grab this a while ago, but i just never seen it. Saw it today and grabbed it. Awesome. Very, very cool stuff, so happy to get this. A uh, little bit of Jap Rock here. I believe Fred has shown this record before. Um, this is actually my third record by this band. Awesome. Flower Traveling Band, this is anywhere. Amazing, you know. They do um, 21st Century Schizoid Man, The House of the Rising Sun. Um, they do a cover of Black Sabbath. They just rock the shit out of it. It's fantastic, fantastic stuff. And very interesting cover. Those two guys in back there look pretty cozy. But yeah, awesome. Very happy to get this. Phoenix reissue, of course. Flower Traveling Band. Once again, got to thank Mike for this. Uh, we sort of did a trade. He grabbed this for me. I grabbed something for him. 
And I'm so glad he grabbed me this because it's it's awesome. It's one of those really cool records to have. So Michael Chapman, of course, um, the UK folk singer. Um, his albums were just reissued. His first two, Rainmaker, which is fantastic. Pick that up. And uh, Fully Qualified Survivor. Well, this is very recent. I believe this was put out last year, I want to say. Uh, put out by Thurston Moore, his label, Static Peace. In a very limited run, 500 only. Uh, my number is number 146 of 500. Michael Chapman, the Reven the I'm sorry, the Resurrection and Revenge of Michael Cl of Michael Clayton. <laughs> the Resurrection and Revenge of Clayton Peacock. Oof, it's kind of late. Um, awesome experimental noise. It's just him with a guitar, a lot of feedback, and um, from what I understand, I, I believe Mike was saying that uh, Thurston Moore sort of, you know, egged him on, inspired him to do this. And it's a very, very cool record. And obviously, not something you'd expect from Michael Chapman, but it's such a cool piece to have, and love that cover. Cool. Here's one that was recommended to me, meaning to check out for a while. Uh, Teddy Vinylicious showed this. I think that's where I first saw it. Very out there stuff. Not quite sure what to make of it yet. Got just gotta listen to it some more. But it's very interesting, very avant-garde. I want to say. I mean, I'm not sure of how how else to put it. Um, the world of Harry Parch, and um, it was sort of an interesting character. I mean. Um, composer and just you know created his own instruments and tried to come up with his own sort of sound and definitely achieves that. I love what was written on here. I mean about it's, it's published in Newsweek. I mean um, African polyrhythms and the ancient Greek modes, um, bits of Babylonia and the pulse of the American diesel engine, all gathered into a richly Erotic, primitive, fresh, and stirring drama of sound. I thought that was cool. But, um, just gotta listen to it some more. It's very different. Um, he, he's put on lumped into lists with, like, Moondog and Sun Ra. But, I want to say, you know, this is probably the more challenging of those two. I mean, they're obviously very challenging. But, I uh, just gotta listen to it some more. So, cool. Now I guess sort of begins the jazz part of this portion of uh, my program here. Um, saw this and grabbed it. Carlos Santana and John McLaughlin with uh, Love, Devotion, Surrender. And uh, I guess they sort of had the same guru. And this is sort of a tribute to him as well as John Coltrane. Very excellent stuff. I mean, to do a couple Coltrane tunes and just, you know, there's electric guitar, acoustic guitar, and very very cool so happy to get that for four bucks on Columbia Records uh, a couple Miles Davis here I want to say this is probably early 60s uh, probably early 60s Milestones Miles Davis uh, I showed a bunch of Miles Davis in my last video and said how beautiful they are this is from that same collection and beautiful beautiful shapes just near mint um, for seven bucks and very, very cool stuff. Um, excellent. And another one here. Later Miles Davis this time. I never see this record. I saw it at Feeding Tube and grabbed it. I think it was like seven bucks or something. Yeah. Six or seven bucks. Miles Davis, 2-2. Two, two. And I want to say it's from 80... I want to say 86 around there. Very 80s in its production. And near mint shape. Just beautiful shape. Um, but still very funky, uh, a lot of synthesizers going on, very cool, so happy to get it, I mean, cool stuff, add to the Miles Davis, moving on, uh, this one was really cool to find, uh, Mingus, and this is Mingus Dynasty, again, I just, you can't go wrong with, with Charlie Mingus, I mean, and the cool thing about this, this also cost me $7. It was up in the front of the store. wasn't priced yet. There was a scuff on the record, so I was kind of like, eh, I don't know how much they want for it. 7 bucks. 
went home and cleaned it up. Plays beautifully. There's like nothing wrong with it. And it is an original Columbia 6i for seven bucks. If you could see this record, I mean, it's, it's beautiful. You, there is a few marks on it, but for the most part, I mean, if you can see that, very happy with this. So cool. So, cool, seven bucks, and it's just a fantastic, very interesting record. So, okay. Gonna try and move quicker now. What am I at? 15 minutes. Ah, so this is a uh, killer, killer, killer stuff. Um, I've wanted to pick this up for a while. I've seen it before in various conditions. And this one was beautiful for four bucks. Uh, Keith Jarrett, the Cologne concert, ECM, amazing, amazing. Uh, improvised piano, solo piano. Um, Fred has talked about this a couple times. From what going from what he said, I guess Keith Jarrett was going off like no sleep, um, was exhausted playing on a subpar piano, and but this is an amazing. This is on a lot of lists like must hear jazz albums, you know, for good reason. It's an amazing record for sure. Two LP set in beautiful shape on ECM. So happy to get this. Check it out. Recommended. Okay, a few uh, reissues. Free jazz here. Now this is very, very challenging. Not everyday listening for sure, but um, just sort of just picked this up. Didn't know anything about it. Burton Green, the Burton Green Ensemble with Aquariana. This is BYG Actual number eight reissue. Very, very free jazz, very challenging stuff, but very cool. Super happy to get this. Not everyday listening, not not easy listening, but it's the stuff I'm, I'm just so interested in and trying to understand it. And very cool, so happy to get this. And I mentioned Sun Ra, speaking of him, uh, a while back I picked up a few of his albums and said, I'm definitely getting more. I finally did. I've wanted these records for a long time. Um, finally got them. Sun Ra and his Solar Myth Orchestra. The Solar Myth Approach Volume 1. Again, BYG Actual number 40. Amazing. <laughs> I, I'm in love with this guy. I mean, yes, it's, it's challenging. It's very different. And I mean, Sun Ra was so ahead of the curve on the free jazz thing. I mean, you know, I think people laughed at him and then... They all kind of end up doing what he's been doing for years. And, um, very, very cool stuff. And I picked up Volume 2. So finally got them both. Interesting stuff, man. I mean, he's doing, uh, I think I think this is like his first experimentations with synthesizers. And of course, you know, he, he was an innovator you know, playing electronic keyboard. You know, very, very cool stuff. And awesome really there's some solo p uh, key keyboard work on here you know space music it's just it's space music and one more sun Ra, one I've, i wanted and it's this one is on a lot of lists for like free jazz great great albums the Helio heliocentric world of sun Ra, volume one and phew, this is awesome again it takes work with the Sun Ra, you know, but this is a later reissue. I want to say it's, it's an Italian press on the bass record. Uh, I don't know, but uh, it's in beautiful shape. It was only like 12 bucks, so I grabbed it and very happy to get it. I believe that is the original cover, if I'm not mistaken. And I know... Um, McSoapy, you have an original. Bastard. Very, very cool stuff, though. This next album here is a monster record. It really is, and I highly recommend it. Fred, do you know about this record? If not, please, check it out. This is Fire uh, with Jim O'Rourke. This was put out last year, and this is amazing. <laughs> this is just a fantastic record. 
I don't know what to call it. It's like rock and jazz. It's like, it's very raw. Um, it's just like it builds and builds with this rough beat and this fantastic guitar. And it's like it builds and then it just explodes with this amazing like saxophone. It's just baritone saxophone. It's very, it's like avant-garde jazz rock, but it's neither jazz nor rock. It's just fucking awesome, man. I highly recommend it. One of the best things I've heard in a long time. And I just bought this on a whim. I was just like, oh, I'll grab this. And it's awesome. It really is. Put out last year. Fire, I believe, are sort of a experimental avant-garde jazz group from Sweden. And Jim O'Rourke, of course. You know, the very experimental musician, guitarist. Awesome. Please, check this out. I highly recommend this. A few more here. The very last thing is the amazing, amazing, can't believe it find, but all these are amazing. Alice Coltrane, finally got a copy. Uh, J Journey in Statue de Nada. <laughs> if I said that right, awesome. Again, just very, very, her heart playing is amazing. Um, very, just hypnotic, very beautiful grooves on here, it's just, and Feral Sanders, of course, is playing on here, it's, it's awesome, so, very happy to finally get this record, it, it's everything that people say, it's awesome, bye, alright, Fred, gotta thank you for this one, man, uh, I went back and watched your recent, or I'm sorry, your obscure classic on this record, and whew, this is such a killer record. <clears throat> I'm going to slaughter the name. I'm, I won't be able to say it as as beautifully as Fred could, but it's the Art Ensemble of Chicago. Uh, uh, La Stanza Sophie. La, La, uh, I'm not going to say it, but you know. La, La, Sta, La Stanza Sophie. <laughs> so anyway. <laughs> awesome. Awesome, awesome. Very soulful avant-garde jazz. I mean... Amazing. This is the Soul Jazz Records reissue. Unbelievable. Um, features the vocals of uh, F Fontana Bass. Amazing. On um, that opening track, Fima de Yo Yo. Unbelievable. Uh, this, this record is so good. Buy it. Highly recommend this. Uh, I'll take it out. Amazing. I mean, yeah, Roscoe Mitchell, of course, Lester Bowie, Joseph Jarman, the art ensemble. Fantastic. So happy to finally get this. And finally, the one last one here. I'm already at 23 minutes. God, I just can't help it, I guess. 20 something albums. I mean, I saw this in Feeding Tube Records. My jaw just dropped. And granted, it's not a an original. An original of this would cost probably about $150 to $200, depending on condition. Originally, it is on a vertical swirl. But when I saw this, this is a 2002 reissue. And you don't see these at all. Um, and for 30 bucks, Fred, are you paying attention? I got you to thank for this, because without you, I, I wouldn't know what this was. <sighs> the Keith Tippett Group. Dedicated to you, but you weren't listening. Now, this is a fantastic record. Uh, I showed uh, Keith Tippett, Centipede. This is, it, it's awesome. Very, it's, this is a jazz record, avant-garde jazz. Um, the songs either sort of swing, or they're very out there, experimental. Again, Keith Tippett was sort of involved with the Canterbury Prague scene. Um... He married Julie Driscoll. She became Julie Tippetts. Um, Robert Wyatt is on this record. It's, it's just amazing. Elton Dean is on this. Um, they played in Soft Machine. Keith Jarrett played on a number of King Crimson records. and This is an amazing, amazing record. And so glad to have it. I mean, this is the Akarma reissue from 2002. It was still sealed. 20 bucks. Uh, 30 bucks. <laughs> Awesome. Look at that cover, man. Brainchild. I couldn't believe it. 
So yeah, excellent stuff. So this is what happens. Great track. Um, thoughts to Jeff. And uh, yeah, just the whole thing is awesome. Like I said, it's either very song sort of swing or it's very out there and experimental and avant garde. Amazing, amazing. So there you go. Those are my finds. Super happy to get these records. And if you'll excuse me now, I'm going to go listen to them. So, see you guys. Leave me comments.